Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Time for that weekly Mod Collection Demo Shop update. Alright, so two weeks ago we had some serious issues with multiple orders being placed for the same guitars. And then just last week, Gibson revamped their entire website trying to fix things and ended up breaking it even further. This week, it was pretty smooth. They were only three minutes late. They had a little bit of a rough start with this weird disappearing glitch, like you had to scroll down all the way on the page for everything to show up, because they now have this loading thing, which as of right now, at the time of recording, it only shows two guitars and it just forever loads. But we didn't have any of those small photo errors or anything. And in fact, this time, every single guitar that we're going to look at this week showed up at the same time. It used to be batches of five or six, so you'd have to refresh the page a couple of times. So this was completely new. And the only other weird thing I saw is some of these listings stayed up longer, even after they had been purchased, but it showed as sold. Hey, Gibson, you trying to put me out of a job here? <laughs> so I was thinking like every week they were just going to leave everything up. That way people could view them because as of right now, we don't have a way to see the sold listings, but it does look like the new links are continuing to work now instead of being completely taken down like last week. But so far, no big bulk page. But we're going to start with the 70s Explorer in Moscato Mist. But it has almost like a champagne sparkle going on here. You've got a dark silver border with a lighter color in the center. You've got the tortoise shell pick guard, which looks interesting. You've got the P94 pickup in the neck and a regular humbucker in the bridge. And then they played with a copper tailpiece, black for the rest. The really rosy fretboard here matches well with that guard. And this was a complete refinish. They also did the burst on on the back and it kind of looks like they did it on the headstock maybe not kind of hard to tell but it looks like they played around with the tuners with gold and black and also the same red tortoiseshell stuff up here. Not a bad pickup at 25. Next up, Lima Loca Satin. Not gonna lie to you guys, if this was 4,500 bucks, I would have picked it up for a full review and demo. It looks like they aged our tailpiece here. Like it started as gold, but now it's like all worn through. You get a little bit of that here on the bridge as well, but then you get straight up gold covers there. All right, kind of interesting. Nothing too much changed on our headstock, but where this one got special is the back. We've got a creamy stinger back here. And yeah, they put a perloid backplate. Being listed at 6100, I guess it doesn't surprise me that it hasn't sold yet. But check this thing out. Les Paul special goth morning. You know, like good morning, but goth. <laughs> <laughs> I can see this going really well in some teenage girl's room. It's that right plum color, and then you get this like black lace design type thing going on. I like it, especially since they blacked everything else out. At first I was like, why didn't they do it on the back? But then it's like, well, I guess somebody in the goth styling probably would want a black back. But I feel like that was kind of a missed opportunity not to give it a plum Gibson logo or do something special with our truss rod cover. There's a 335 figure, nothing too special to talk about on that one, except for it was done up in a satin finish. And then we had this really cool 57 reissue in what they called Smoky Starburst. This really reminds me of the Bill Kelleher Les Paul. You know, it was done up in Gold Burst. I mean, this is kind of similar. According to the spec sheets, it is also a satin finish. But that's a really dark back. Like, I, I can't even tell if that's black or just really, really deep red. I think it's the latter. However, now that I think about it, 57 reissue, this star life as a gold top. So they added the border colors because this would have started life as a complete gold top. Okay, no wonder it looks like a gold burst. It technically is. It could have been price worse. They had one of these 60s J45 originals. Nothing really changed on that though. But wait till you check out this Explorer. Out of all of them, this was probably the most tempting to buy this week. Because at first glance, this is like, okay, it's one of those black 70s Explorers. What's so special about that? But then you zoom in a little bit. Okay, one, two, three. Four knobs? Hey, what's that? Ooh. <laughs> so, toggle switch like normal, but the see-through pick guard lets you see the entirety of it. And then they have a black kill switch right here. And then I would imagine some sort of like a volume tone so you can do your swells with your bridge pickup and whatnot because it's so easy to do. I'm not sure if that's a good location for the kill switch, but I'm glad they're putting them in more guitars. But it's got the burst bucker one and two pickups, but ooh, push-pull coil splitting built into all that fun stuff too. But they didn't do anything on the back. But all those fun mods for a non-premium price. Seems like a winner to a player to me. This SG Tribute, not too much changed. Swapped out knobs, no poker chip. Looks like we got black chrome hardware everywhere. We've got the special pickup covers that expose the slug coils as well as the adjustable ones. And our tortoiseshell pick guard. And this just all this really works on this. And I love this. That's an interesting wood grain pattern we've got going on here. And then you flip it over to the back. It's got a maple neck. Some decent mahogany going on. Clear backplate. Interesting. They modified one of those USA casinos up, slapped a Bigsby on it, converted the bridge pickup to a cream cover, and called it a day because they really didn't do too much else to this one. 
Here's one of those Les Paul tributes in electric yellow satin. Pretty hefty premium on this one. This finish is like a neon yellow, but slightly greener, I guess you could say. A little bit more dull. Got some black hardware. I can't complain too much as long as they do the complete refin. But perhaps the number one this week has to go to this Les Paul special appropriately named Cognac Marble. So a couple of weeks ago, they were doing these marbled finishes and I scolded them saying, you guys need to do the entire guitar. And it seems they kind of listened this time. So it's kind of a swirl job like they were doing, but this time it's a little bit different. It kind of reminds me of the classic rock series from around 2015 when they were doing those marble tops. But this time it's just a little bit of a purple hue. We've got the bejeweled knobs, still a wrap tail piece. Looks like some sort of a golden P90 cover. You don't see that too often. But then you flip it over to the back and BAM! There it is! They didn't skimp out this time and oh! It looks like we have brass back plates. I wonder if that's what those covers are on the front. But then I looked at the neck and it's like, ah, they didn't do the entire guitar. However, then I got closer on the back of the headstock and okay, may maybe they did? I mean, the design's at least on the back of the headstock. So maybe the neck is just like that or maybe it's in like a burst theme. I'm not sure. But I love the choice of the tuners on this. Locking Grovers with Perloid Schaller tips, nice. And it looks like we even have a matching headstock on this thing and a brass truss rod cover. But I told him to do the fretboard too, so I'm still not fully satisfied yet, Mod Shop. <laughs> I know Gibson doesn't normally do that, but hey, maybe, maybe if I keep poking at them, they'll do it. Because they did the monkey SGs like that. Surely we can do a colored fretboard too. Fender's done it. Here is an interesting SG standard, Caribbean Ocean Satin. For 2700 you've got your P94 pickup in the neck and then just the regular exposed coil one with the side covers. Blacked out hardware, it kind of reminds me of the Goro Udo Les Paul. You got like a turquoise-ish green in the center and then a blue edge. I mean, you'll notice there's no pick guard on this SG anymore. It's got the matching headstock and they burst up the back of the neck and the body. And this SG tribute got really freaky for 2000 bucks. It kind of reminds me of that Explorer they did one time where they had the sympathetic pickup in the back. Because this time they put one of those vintage style trems on it, they gave it the Firebird teaspoon arm instead. But then we've got a Firebird pickup here, and then a dog ear P90 in the neck position, and then the all blacked out finish. The logo looks extra dark on this, we've got Schaller tips on these tuners as well. And interestingly enough, the back has a natural neck. And then to my surprise, those are actually real Schaller tuners back here. <laughs> Imagine that. That'd be cool if Gibson starts using those again. Then it looks like they upgraded you to a case. So I mean, yeah, it's a premium price, but at least you got the case. The 70s Deluxe got a similar treatment like we saw last week. Kind of a faux neck through design with purple. But then for some reason they went for the Firebird style mini humbuckers with the mini humbucker rings on them. I don't know, this whole mod just kind of made it look a little bit cheap in my opinion. But I called him out last time and said, hey, why didn't you do the entire back, including the neck? It might just be coincidental, but this time we got the purple stripe neck. Next is the 50 standard done up in dusty pine. Kind of just a off green color. But hey, that mahogany back. Some interesting figuring. And then lastly, I was also tempted on this one at 5600. It's a 57 reissue Les Paul Custom, so that means it naturally has the mahogany top, which makes it different from most other customs. You've got the other historic features like the long neck tenon that we can't see in this photo, but you also have the ABR1 bridge, and they all changed that out, changed our plastics, changed the pickup covers. Looks like even the Gibson USA style strap buttons. The headstock got a wooden truss rod cover, which honestly doesn't really look good on this one, in my opinion. I mean, when you see the entire guitar, it's like, okay, this the body's one color, but the truss rod cover is just slightly a different hue. It really just looks like a cheap part, and I think it's because it's not like glossy lacquered. There's ways to do wooden parts right, like on a V Les Paul, and then there's ways to make them look kind of cheap, like what you got here. Then we've got these weird acoustic-like tuners here. For me, I'm not a big fan of open back tuners. It doesn't make me think Les Paul, but I'm sure somebody might like this. But whoa, what is going on with our serial number here? DS0014. Was this an abandoned signature model? Do you know any famous 57 Les Paul users with the initials DS? There might be more of a story to this one than we know. But that wraps it up for the mod collection. Let's go ahead and check out the US demo shop. A couple of good deals with about one custom finish, if I remember correctly. And we'll start with the greatest deal of all time. 57 Les Paul custom reissue. You got your three pickups. You've got your Bigsby. 
You've got the aged plastics, but not necessarily the aging. This is the Jimmy Page guitar. If you want to check out a vintage one, I documented one in this episode. About 5400 bucks for one of these, just because it's stamped demo and has like a few minor blemishes that pretty much any of them from the factory will have some degree of. That's not bad. Next, another Les Paul tribute. I just wanted to show you this one because, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of a pumpkin. It's got a lot of mineral streaks in it, which you don't normally find on Les Pauls. There was a left-handed Les Paul custom. I had somebody about a month back. They hired me to get them a lefty Les Paul custom back from overseas because they just couldn't find one at a good price. So when this thing popped up, it's like, oh man, we could have just got this. But then I kept looking through all these photos and like, okay, I'm glad we did it because that binding is bad. You could probably clean it up with some sandpaper. I mean, you won't be able to do much with that unless you re-lacquer it. But I mean, there's ways to make that look better. But when I saw this 57 gold top, I was like, oh, another lefty. This one just catches my attention. It's a really dark gold finish. But then imagine my surprise as I continue through the photos like, okay, decent mahogany. But then I start to see some of the damages. Pretty sizable ding right there. But then right here, you might not be able to see it, but that is an entire impression right here. That had to have been like accidentally hit against a wall or something. As in the grand scheme of things, doesn't matter. Here's a 59 reissue with another mineral streak line right here. Otherwise, a very nice top. Ultra dark back. But then, ooh, a little bit of a chip right here in our finish. Ooh, another one right there. Oh, Murphy Lab book. <laughs> I really like these COAs. I'm not sure if the Murphy Labs are still doing those or not, because I haven't seen one, but I haven't had a regular Murphy Lab. It's usually some sort of a, hey, this is also a Noel Gallagher guitar or something, you know? So I'm wondering if this is one of those early ones that the rest of the finish is going to start flaking on it. We've seen a whole bunch of these, but every week they just happen to get another one. It's the whole double staining process really brings the flame maple to life on them. I'm about to buy one of these bangle things just because we talk about them almost every single week. I need to have a video to point you guys to. Now as far as the things that sold quickly, we have what they called Mystic Forest Burst on a Les Paul Classic. So it kind of reminds me of like the Ocean Water Green Les Paul Classics that we had around 2017 and then they're also Sweetwater exclusives now if I remember correctly. So at first I thought okay maybe it's just something like that but they slightly modified the pickups or something because it's a nice trans green finish you can see the wood grain and it looks like we've got a little bit of flame. I mean that's a pretty nice top for a classic. Generally those are plain 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 tops. And then this has got that going on for it that whole completely blacked out headstock without the Les Paul model silkscreen on it. I really fell in love with that look in this review and demo of the orange flame top guitar. Oh man, I almost got really excited for a second there. This is one digit away from being something that I wish I would have bought. 20, 20, 20, 20. That just needs to be a two and it's got the whole repeating digit thing going on. But then I kept flipping through the photos and oh... It's got a blue border that changes colors. So that's gonna be way cooler in person. And I know because they did a similar finish to this before and somebody sent me photos. And all things considered, not too bad of a price for a custom color. Till I found out about the case snatching. Check out this Flying V Custom. I don't remember ever seeing a 58 style Flying V in Silver Burst exactly like this one. Like I'm sure I've seen it before, but look at the V tailpiece right here. It's all shiny chrome, whereas everything else was super dulled over. It gives it an interesting vibe paired with this finish. But it's nice to see one of these with just a regular headstock instead of the, the planned modern-esque reverse Silver Burst that Adam Jones has got going on. And then the European side of things. Only two really worth talking about. They didn't upload much this week. Good deal on one of these Explorer Customs. And then another one of these Special Tribute DCs for a decent price and had some pretty cool wood grain on the top, back, and on the neck with the giant demo stamp. All right, Troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.